I, I heard this very, very loud noise above me. Uh, it was just a tremendous roar, and uh, it was above, and uh, it sounded like it was coming towards, towards you. And, uh, and then the wind, a very, very fierce wind, and my, my, my health, it started lifting me up off the ground. And so that's when I crouched down. All I, the next thing, I, I just crouched down, I got to the corner of the staircase by the railing, and I just got as small as I could possibly get. You know, I just, because I'm not a big guy to begin with, so fortunately I'm not. Uh, so I got in a, and I literally, well, I guess the best way to describe it, I tried to crawl into my fire helmet. I, that's, that's what I wanted to do, just to protect myself. And uh, I wasn't sure what was going on. I thought the building might be coming down, and I figured, uh, Okay, this could be it, you know. I mean, uh, and I was a little angry. I, I got, uh, I just, you know, so like, damn it, like, why me? Why, you know, I'm beautiful. I'm gonna die in the World Trade Center on a beautiful summer morning. I just like, it's like a little denial and disbelief sets in. And uh, uh, so then I started getting hit with stuff. You know, it was just debris was hitting me, and uh, I got, it went dark. And then the next thing was just total silence. Nothing, no wind. No noise, no light, nothing. And then I started hearing noises. I started hearing like moaning, and guys were starting to communicate, yell out. These were the guys that I was trapped with. Uh, they're calling out, who's there, you guys are right, blah, 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 and this kind of thing. And I realized I was other people, I wasn't alone, you know. Because you, when you're alone in a situation like that, you talk, it's like existential isolation. It's like, <laughs> and then when you find out you're with other people, it, 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 it makes you feel a lot better, even though you know you're in a very bad situation. At least there's other people. But then the strangest thing happened. This beam of sunlight came right in on us, like about eight inches long, but it was clearly sunlight. It was all dirty and full of uh, debris. And it, was like, it looked like pepper was floating around in it, sort of. But it was sunlight, and I'm like, I'm like amazed now. <laughs> it's a 110-story building above us, and I'm looking up at the sun. <laughs> Every time a floor hit another floor, it would not only make a noise, but it would cause tremendous vibration. So we're being bounced up and down off the floor, hearing this collapse coming closer and closer. Mickey Cross was caught on the second floor. My helmet started flying off my head. I had forgotten to snap my helmet, so I grabbed my helmet. I guess instinctually, I just pulled myself down to the corner. The collapse of the North Tower created a massive rush of air. I was blown down six stories down to the, the first floor, and I, all I can remember while I was being blown down was, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. There wasn't any time to think about anything. The 110-story tower disintegrated in just 10 seconds. It was that fast, yet for me it was kind of slow motion too at the same time. And I remember thinking to myself, I said, oh shit, this is it, we didn't make it. Faced with what seemed like certain death, the trapped firemen thought their last thoughts and prepared to die. In those 10 seconds, I thought of, I was like, well, I'm 33, what have I done with my life? Worked almost all the time. My wife is going to, you know, be a widow now. Um, and I pretty much saw myself, I saw, pretty much saw my funeral. I saw everybody at the wake at my funeral and my parents and family there. You think about everything that's, everything, I guess, that you haven't done in your life and you realize that, is this it? Are you gonna make it out of here? And I was just too young and I have too much more to do with my life than for this to be it. I thought I was gonna be dead in a few seconds and I remember feeling, I, I hope, you know, this, I hope this is fast. Because <laughs> I had a, a fear of being trapped, like say with a broken back or severely injured and still being conscious and alive. It was strange, but I was at peace when the collapse actually started. I said, right, whatever's gonna happen now is gonna happen. And I hope it doesn't hurt too much, but, uh, but the fear was gone. The collapse of the North Tower
killed over 1,300 people trapped inside the building. But some of the concrete walls encasing stairway B had remained intact, and enclosed within them, 14 people were still alive. As they opened their eyes, it seemed as if a miracle had happened. I could hear Mike. I could hear him groaning. I could hear him uh, called out to me. I called out to him, so I knew he was alive. You know, from the neck up, I seemed okay, but everything else was just like pins and needles. I mean, I was slapping my leg with my arm. I'm watching my arm hit my leg, but I can't feel it. I had my flashlight on my side, and I looked, and I looked at my hands and looked, you know, looked at myself to see if I was bleeding or anything anywhere. When he heard noises around him, Captain Jay Jonas realized he, too, had somehow survived the disaster. I wanted to know who was still alive and uh, I started calling them out by name. Hundreds more firemen were now arriving at the disaster area, but Captain J. Jonas's Mayday messages were still not getting through. Trapped down in the remains of Stairway B, there was nothing else Jay could do. We realized we can't get ourselves out, and uh, that's a big mental leap for a fireman to take, because we're so used to being the people who are going in to rescue someone. Now, the roles are reversed and you realize you're helpless yourself. But with the survivors buried alive beneath a debris field that extended over 16 acres, it seemed they would need another miracle to save them. It was midday on 9-11 and in the chaos and confusion, Captain J. Jonas's Mayday messages were still not being received. The firemen had no idea there was a pocket of survivors nearby. Then Jay again tries to make radio contact. Unexpectedly, this time his call is picked up. One of the officers coordinating rescue operations is Chief Nick Visconti. He responds to J. Jonas's Mayday call. I got a, a radio transmission from Nick Visconti. I heard operations post to ladder six. Operations post to ladder six. This is Jay, where are you? Okay, ten four. North Tower, stairwell B is in boy on the second floor. But the location Jay gave was unbelievable to them. The North Tower no longer existed. They asked for his location again. He asked me that a couple times, and one time he asked me that. Somebody else got on the radio and said, where's the North Tower? I remember somebody saying that, where's the North Tower on the radio? And I said, oh shit. I says, this, it's not good.